What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new 27-inch iMac for 2012. Now I realize this may be deja vu to many of you who saw my 21.5-inch iMac unboxing. The design here is mostly the same, just scaled up for size, and there's a few other benefits to that 27-inch size and form factor. Now this is the first complete overhaul of the iMac in quite a while, so we get a new, much thinner body design, Ivy Bridge Intel CPUs, and USB 3.0, as well as an optional Fusion Drive, which is in this model. Now, since this is my main production machine, I've really gone out a lot on this one. This one has all the boxes checked on it, so I've went with the 3.4 gigahertz quad-core i7, a three terabyte fusion drive, and I also have the GeForce GTX 6800 MX with two gigs of dedicated GDDR5 RAM. I'm upgrading the RAM myself, so I stuck with the eight gigs, and I'm gonna upgrade this to 32 gigs, and I will be doing that in this video, so stay tuned for that. Now, once again, we have that distinctive trapezoidal box, which makes packaging much more stable for transport. Apple also makes it much easier to open. So again, all you have to do is slice the tape and let the front of the box open up. Now, tucked in the top is our accessory box containing our wireless Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, as well as other accessories. Now, the keyboard is familiar territory here with that aluminum unibody design and the white chiclet style keys. Now, on either side, we'll find the power button as well as the battery compartment, which you can open with a coin. We still have all of our familiar Apple keyboard functions at the top, such as controlling screen brightness, mission control, launcher, media controls, and an eject button for operating an external optical disk drive if you want. We also have our multi-touch magic mouse. And like the keyboard, this also comes pre-installed with non-rechargeable batteries. Before we move on, let's just power these up so we're ready to go once we get the iMac booted up for the first time. Now below that, we'll find our literature packet, which includes a quick start guide, warranty information, Apple stickers, and Apple branded microfiber cleaning cloth for cleaning that glass display. Now getting back to the iMac, we just need to remove the top segment of the styrofoam, which reveals our very slender iMac and nestled comfortably in yet more styrofoam. Behind that, we'll find our detached power cord. Now we can remove the entire iMac from the box, which is noticeably lighter this time than the outgoing iMac, so you can actually lift this up pretty comfortably. Now we just need to free the power cable from the packaging and set that aside for now. Now with the rest of the styrofoam segments removed, we have that familiar envelope protecting the iMac. And to free it, we just peel the tabs at the lower back of the iMac. Uh, these tabs will fall down. You just kind of have to free the, uh, the styrofoam from behind the um, Hinge, lift up, and you're good to go. Now next up, we have lots of plastic covering the glass panel. We just need to peel it off from around the edges and sides. And incidentally, this plastic panel also covers the RAM access panels just under the hinge of the iMac. So there's a lot more plastic here than on the 21.5 inch model. Next up is the plastic covering the pedestal. And as you might notice, the hinge is still using springs to help hold up the heavier 27 inch iMac. The 21.5 inch iMac doesn't have these uh, springs on them. So with the plastic removed, we can take a closer look. And the standout feature here is that five millimeter thin bezel, which gives us the illusion of an impossibly thin iMac. They've managed to achieve this by eliminating the optical drive, relocating the SD card slot to the back of the iMac, and reducing the screen assembly's thickness by 40% which involves laminating the LCD display directly to the glass. So unlike the previous iMac, you won't be able to easily remove the glass with suction cups. Now in many ways, the design is still very familiar. So we still have that aluminum unibody design uh, with a pivoting pedestal and an edge-to-edge -edge glass panel. At the bottom, we'll find the chin, uh, which houses the Apple logo. Now, like before, the chin houses the air vents and down-firing stereo speaker grills, which in this case are milled into the edge of the bezel. Now, my initial impressions of the speakers are actually very positive. So we have a very deep bass response and a clearer dynamic range. So you can tell that the uh, speakers are actually using the, the chassis of the iMac as its resonance chamber. So it actually sounds pretty good. Now, behind the pistol, you'll find the chassis exhaust vent. Missing now from the previous generation is an air vent at the top of the display. So instead we have a smooth, seamless design. As always, the Apple logo acts as an RF transparent window for Wi-Fi to pass through the metal chassis unaffected. Now on the front of the display, we'll find the FaceTime HD camera along with an ambient light sensor and an LED indicator. Now near the FaceTime camera toward the back and edge of the iMac are a set of microphones. So we have dual microphones for enhanced audio quality. Now looking at the back of the iMac, we'll find all of the I.O. ports in one location, including an SDXC card slot. 
Now, next to that is a single headphone jack, which has a built-in optical audio output as well, if you use the right adapter. We also see four USB 3.0 ports, replacing the four USB 2.0 ports from last time, and we have two Thunderbolt ports and a gigabit ethernet jack. Now, missing from the last generation is a Firewire 800 port and the secondary auxiliary input, although the headphone jack does support Apple's microphone input, as do many other headsets. Now, if you need to use Firewire, Apple does sell an adapter for the Thunderbolt port. Now, on the opposite side, we'll find the power button, which is now concave, so it's easier to feel for. It kind of resembles the home button on an iPad or iPhone. Now, behind the pedestal, we'll find the power supply, and below that is a Kensington lock. Now, unique to the 27-inch iMac is a user-accessible RAM panel. This means we can easily upgrade our own RAM, and this time we don't need any tools to do it, so no screwdrivers or anything like that. Now, concealed in the power port is a button to release the panel. You'll probably need something to push on that small button to release it. Uh, in this case, I just used my SD card. Now, the panel pops off, and it's only held on with these anti-vibration friction fittings along the side. And inside the panel are instructions on how to remove or install your own RAM. Now, our first step is to release the RAM carriage, which pops up when you spread the clips apart. Now, I'm removing the original 4 gig RAM sticks and replacing them with 8 gig sticks from Crucial. So I'll place links in the description below if you're interested in picking these up for yourself. So we have four slots and I have four 8 gig RAM sticks. So that gives me 32 gigs in total. So installation is very easy. Uh, the slots are clearly defined and all you have to do is push them in firmly to seat them correctly. And once you're done with installation, we just have to push the carriage back down and reinstall the panel. Now the power cable has also been slightly redesigned and angled to accommodate the thinner profile. Now the display resolution is unchanged here. So we still have a resolution of 2560 by 1600, but the LCD IPS display is now laminated to the glass. So this creates less light refraction through the glass panel and better off access viewing. They've also applied an anti-reflective coating, which Apple says reduces glare by 75%, which doesn't completely eliminate glare, but makes it much more manageable. So if you really look, uh, for example, if I turn it into my uh, soft boxes here, you can see that it controls glare pretty well. Uh, so although this is not a retina display, the color and optical quality of the display look very similar to the retina MacBook Pro. Now onto some benchmarking to test performance. Now, first stop is Geekbench running at 64-bit, and our score here is a little over 14,000. Now, by comparison, my similarly equipped last-generation 27-inch iMac scored about uh, 12,000. So there is a significant gain here, but it's not overwhelming. So really, the gain here is from that Ivy Bridge processor. Next stop is Cinebench to test our gaming performance. So we scored about 42 frames per second for the OpenGL test and 7.29 points on the CPU test. Now, by comparison, my last gen iMac on an ATI Radeon HD 6970M, also with two gigs of RAM, actually beat the OpenGL score on the new iMac at 45 frames per second. But the new iMac still takes the edge on the CPU test at 7.29 points versus 6.72 points. Now, in terms of disk performance, again, we have that Fusion drive, which combines a 128 gig SSD with a three terabyte hard disk drive into a single drive. Now, that hard disk drive is running at 7,200 RPM. Now, previously, I had an SSD and a HDD in the same system, which are treated as separate volumes, which you have to manage individually. This means if you run out of storage on the SSD, you have to manually relocate files to the hard disk drive. The Fusion Drive aims to make this much simpler by intelligently identifying frequently accessed apps and files and keeping them on the SSD for quicker load times. It also writes everything to the SSD initially and loads them onto the HDD in the background as needed. Now in our test, we see that the SSD is doing all the heavy lifting here. So it's writing at about 350 megs per second and reading at 400 megs per second. This makes the system very fast to load apps and the operating system. And we can demonstrate this by launching all of the apps simultaneously, uh, which is a pretty fun uh, party trick with SSDs. You couldn't do this with an HDD. It would take forever. Uh, and certainly the reading speed, the read write speeds of a hard disk drive are much slower. So you would not see anything near this. You would see maybe a fourth or a sixth of these speeds. So in conclusion, the 27 inch iMac is an improvement over the outgoing iMac. Uh, certainly a much better design. We have an improved display, not a high resolution display, but an improved display. And uh, we have faster Ivy Bridge processors with USB 3.0 for cheaper, higher speed connections versus the Thunderbolt, uh, which is not readily available in a lot of uh, accessories right now. 
So overall, I'm pretty impressed by the 27-inch iMac. It's my main workhorse, so I'm very excited to get my hands on one, and I look forward to using it for all my future videos. So stay tuned for my next video, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.